Hey there, and welcome back to the Engraving Workshop. I'm Rick. And it's that time of year again, the time for giving. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. My oldest son, Lorcan, just moved his young family from a one-bedroom apartment to a three-bedroom house. And what does any young family need when they make a move like that? Furniture. So in today's video, we're going to be building them a dining room table for less than $100 with just lumber from the big box store. So let's get started. So every project starts out with a set of plans. So I just took and uh, made a rough sketch of the side view of the table and the bottom of the table. So for this project, you're going to need a total of seven two by eight by eight foot and five two by six by eight foot. And that's all you're going to need along with some pocket hole screws, some stain and some water based polyurethane. And that's pretty much it. Now here's a detailed list of the cut list which goes over all the individual items that we're going to need to cut starting with the table top, the breadboards which will go on either side of the, of the end of the table and then you've got your legs, your horizontal supports for your legs, your runners and then your uh, horizontal supports for the base and that's all that you're going to need for the cut list. So we're going to start over here at the chop saw and the first thing we're going to want to do is just put a nice clean edge on the end of our lumber. Once we do that I'm going to set up a stop and then just start individually cutting out the pieces based on the cut list. I'm not going to make any rough cuts. These are all going to be the finished cuts. Uh, since we're only talking about dimensional lumber here this is not hardwoods or anything like that and we've got the exact cut list. We are going to have to go back on the table saw and trim up the edges and it just makes it easier if the pieces are already cut to length. That way we can go ahead and put straight edges on both sides of the two bys. So again, we're just going to start with cutting out the uh, two by sixes and then we're going to cut out the two by eights for the tabletop along with the legs and the breadboards and just get everything on the cut list cut down to size here at the chop saw. The tabletop pieces I only rough cut to 70 inches. We'll finish cut them once they're glued up. With all the pieces cut down to length over at the miter saw, we're now going to move over to the table saw and we're going to start ripping our two by eights down um, to the final width which is six and three quarters of an inch. So here I'm going to take a quarter inch off of one side of the boards. I'm going to run all uh, six table boards and then the two bread boards through. Now with one side of the two by eights cut down I'm going to now cut the other side of the two by eight uh, cutting it down to its finished width uh, which is six and three quarters of an inch and then I'm going to do this for all six of the table boards and then the two bread boards as well. Now with the two by eights cut down to width I'm going to take and do the same thing with the two by sixes. I'm going to take and start out by just cutting a quarter inch off of one end or one edge of the boards and then I'm going to take and cut them down to their finished width, which will be five inches. So I'm going to do this for uh, the four legs, the four horizontal braces for the legs. Uh, I believe it's two runners and then three support pieces. And I'm going to do the same thing like I did with the two by eights. Again, I'm just going to trim up one side and then I'll turn them around and cut them to the five inch width. Okay, now with all the boards cut down to their proper lengths and widths, um, we can start uh, drilling out for pocket holes. Um, as you can see here, we're just doing it old school style uh, with just the uh, Craig pocket hole jig. 
Uh, it would be nice to have the, the Foreman uh, Craig pocket hole jig, but here at the Ingrain Workshop, we just rock it old school. As you can see here, I have my oldest son, Lorkin, uh, doing this task. I kind of handed this off to him. Uh, I did all the uh, cutting at the miter saw and the table saw, and I let him drill out for all the pocket holes. I don't know, it's just, there's, there's just something watching a millennial do manual labor that's, I don't know, gratifying. Um, anyway, it's, it's like finding a unicorn in the wild. But um, he, he did a great job. Uh, again, we took and drilled three pocket holes on the ends of the horizontal leg braces because those are going to have to be drilled into the vertical leg supports. And then we also drilled pocket holes in the support pieces and also for the, the two runners. Then we also drilled pocket holes in the tabletop pieces for the exception of the first piece uh, because you'll see later on in the video when we lay it out, first piece won't require any pocket holes, but all the subsequent uh, tabletop pieces will require one row of pocket holes just on one row of the, uh, the two by. So now with all the pocket holes drilled out, it's time to start the assembly process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the bottom of the legs. I'm going to apply some glue to the ingrain here. And then I'm going to pocket hole the bottom into the, this is the bottom horizontal leg support. And I'm going to drill that into the two vertical uh, legs. And you'll notice that the pocket holes are going to be facing down. So they're going to be actually on the very bottom so they won't be visible and they'll be hidden from view. Once I got the glue up, I'm going to take and put them in some clamps and then I'm going to secure them with pocket, pocket hole screws and then I'll be able to immediately take the clamps off. Pocket hole screws should be able to hold it in place until the glue dries. So now with the two legs uh, screwed and glued together, you can see that the pocket holes like that are on the horizontal leg supports, those are going to be underneath the tabletop, so you're not going to see those. And so what we've done is we've turned it upside down, and Lorkin is putting in the, the two runners that are, that are going to span the width of the base. Again, this is just the base of the table. And again, he's got three pocket holes on the ends of the runners and then I'm going to take and just apply some glue and we're going to clamp them in and then I'm going to drill some pocket hole screws in there and take the clamps off and that will pretty much complete the base of the table. We are going to go back and put in I think three uh, horizontal supports between the two runners uh, just to give it uh, you know additional stability. I don't think that they were really needed. Pro probably could have got away with just one, but we went ahead and installed three, and you'll see those coming up. Here are the three horizontal support braces. And again, just like with the runners, we put three pocket holes, uh, drill three pocket holes on the end of each board. Um, and then we're just going to put a little glue and pop them in with pocket hole screws. And again, you know, I think we could have got away with probably just one support, but we went ahead and put three in just to make sure that it made the table more stable. So this is the final assembled base. Um, you can see the two legs, the runners, the support. And Next we're going to start gluing up the tabletop boards. You're going to start on the edge and we're going to apply just a lot of glue on the edge of the boards 
and then we're going to lay them flat on the concrete and then screw some pocket hole screws to hold them in place. Like I'd said previously, the first board here will not have pocket holes, but then all the subsequent boards will have pocket holes on one edge uh, to join them to the previous board. So now with the top all glued together, it's time to go ahead and cut it down to the final length. So what I'm using here is just a piece of plywood with a factory edge on it. And then I've just taken two spring clamps on either side of the table just to hold it in place. And then I'm just taking my De DeWalt cordless saw and then just cutting this end off. This will be where the breadboard piece will be installed once I get a nice flush finish cut edge on the end of the table and then I'll repeat this to the other side of the table. So I forgot to hit record on the camera while I was installing the two breadboard ends. But as you can see here, you can see the two breadboards on either end of the table. It just hides the end grain. Um, so you've got uh, a nice edge on the end of the board. So now I'm going to start the sanding process. Now up to this point, the tabletop is not secured to the base. Granted, it's sitting on top of the base, but it hasn't been fastened down. We're just using that as a work surface. So I'm going to start doing the, the thing I hate about woodworking, and that's, that's sanding. Um, there are only three reasons that I sand. Either I'm sanding for myself, I'm sanding for a client on a project I'm getting paid for, or in this case, I'm sanding out of love. Uh, so um, I will go ahead and do all the sanding. I think I started at maybe 70 grit, worked my way from 70 grit, to 120 grit to 220 uh, and I think that's about as far as I sanded it uh, to 220 grit and then I went and blew off all the sawdust I took a tack cloth tacked the entire table down to prep it uh, for the staining process So with the sanding complete, they started with the staining process. As you can see here, they started on the bottom of the table uh, just to get a feel of what it was going to look like. That way, if they had to make any adjustments, it was on the bottom of the table and not the finished top of the table. And as you can see here, the, the, the baby called in reinforcements, um, called in Mama, Mama Bear to, to help him stain. Um, and they did a great job. Uh, they stained the base, the bottom, and then they flipped it over and stained the top. Uh, and then once they got that stained, I started with the polyurethane process.
So here's the finished table right after the staining process. You can see the two breadboards on the ends of the table. I'm going to take some just some water-based polyurethane spray in the spray can and start applying coats here. Um, I believe it takes about 30 minutes to an hour between coats. So you apply a coat, wait an hour, then you come back and apply another coat. And you just keep doing that. I think I might have applied four coats total. Then right before you do the final coat, I came back and I sanded down the whole table with some uh, double alt steel wool uh, just to scuff it up a little bit. And then I put the final coat of polyurethane on it and it really turned out great. And here's the finished table with all the coats of polyurethane applied to it. This is the actual finished table. Again, the top is not fastened to the base. I'm just letting the final coat dry. Then once it's dry, we'll load it up into the truck and take it over to Lorkin's house. And once we get it in his dining room, then we'll take and install the top to the, to the base. So when we got uh, the table into his dining room, you can see here we just uh, threw down a blanket and then put the top on top of the blanket. You can see the bottom side of the table here. I did not install any or apply any polyurethane to the bottom of the table. I might have sprayed maybe one coat on the bottom, but again, this is something that's not going to be seen. And you'll also notice the supports on the bottom of the table aren't even stained so again this will not be visible this will all be on the bottom of the table so now I'm just gonna center uh, the the base center with the table from both ends and then from both sides once I get uh, it's uh, symmetrically centered uh, from both ends and both sides then I'm gonna take some uh, two inch screws I'm sorry, two and a half inch screws and screw them into the uh, into the base just to fasten the base to the top. And I think I use cabinet screws. Um, that way the head doesn't uh, penetrate or countersink into the base and it stays flush mounted on the base. That way if he's got to move or do anything where he wants to move the table, he can very easily just take those screws out and uh, take the top off of the base and it just makes it a lot easier to move the table that way. So once the base was fastened to the table, we just flipped it around and there you have it. That's the finished table with the top fastened to the base and we're just gonna center it in his dining room and then take, we had some extra dining chairs from a previous dining room set that we're going to use to just sit around it. This table sits, I think, a total of six chairs, two chairs on each side, and then one chair on each end of the table. So that's it. It was a very nice project to do. Again, it's relatively cheap, less than $100, and all the material was bought at the big box store and our grandson really liked the table, uh, beated it like a drum. Um, you know, the, the family really enjoyed it, and I know that they're going to have many, many memories to make around this dining room table, especially during the holiday season. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope this video helps you out in your project. If it did, please leave it a thumbs up. If you like DIY projects, home improvement projects, and woodworking projects in general, then please subscribe to the channel. Please remember, this is the season for giving. Always pay it forward. From my family to yours, we hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Thanks for watching. Please share. I'm Rick with the Ingrain Workshop. We'll see you next time.